What's going on, arcade nerds? Many of you know that I like uh, Vector arcade machines, and I also like the Vectrex, and I just really enjoy the hardware. I enjoy the way a Vector monitor looks. I don't know, it's, it's just one of my things. I like Vector stuff. Well, I made a video a while back where I said, hey, look, you can, uh, uh, with this circuit, you can, um, use a color vector monitor on your Vectrex. And after that I kinda just, you know, forgot about it. I built myself a, ve a color Vectrex arcade machine and whatever. And um, now I'm kinda picking it back up again. See, I made this circuit board and what I, what I intend to do is sell these circuit boards to as many people that might be as crazy as I am, that might be interested in colorizing your Vectrex with a color vector monitor. Or, another thing this circuit board does is it will colorize any black and white vector arcade machine. Well, well let's say any Atari. Or it also it will also colorize a Mega Race. But what this circuit board will do, or does, is colorize, let's say, asteroids. It will colorize Omega Race, it'll colorize Red Baron, it'll colorize Battle Zone, and so on, and allow you to connect a color vector monitor to your black and white game. Why? I don't know. I just like it. I think it's cool. You know, um, <clears throat> so I realize this is, this is a limited thing that not many people would want, but it's something that I wanted, damn it. So I wanted to do it. Now, I did take a pre order uh, about, a month, about a month ago where <clears throat> I'm selling these for sixty dollars a piece and so I, I made, it, made it available for people that want to get theirs to pay me sixty dollars ahead of time and I, and I needed to do that and the reason that, the reason I needed to do that is because I didn't have the cash to just go out and buy these parts so the people that made the pre-order they they're still gonna get their boards of course but it, it allowed me to you know have the funds to make the boards but so anyway, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to uh, show you how this works, and we'll show you some examples of some games on the Vectrex. I'll plug it into a couple uh, black and white arcade machines and show you that. And I'll, I'll explain how to calibrate it, and I'll show you some of the options it has, and so on. So let's get the power on. And let's uh, show you this thing. Now we're running the Vectrex. Uh, this is the ca the color calibration program. This was written by Malbin, uh, Malbin Vide. Uh, I'm I'm thankful for him writing this because I'm I'm I am no programmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this button, and this will show you all the different colors that can be displayed. Now this is the, this uh, program is used to calibrate the the uh, color board. Now, in order to make this color board work with arcade machines and the Vectrex, I needed a big wide band to adjust for calibration. Now, on the Vectrex color board, there are two potentiometers. One adjusts how large the bands are, where they're going to be. And then here's another one that adjusts how sensitive the bands are. Now if you notice there are these little lines on the side of each color. Now those little lines denote a spot for the programmer to use. So in other words here is the brightest intensity all the way to the top and at the bottom here's the weakest intensity. These sections of color is where the color will be displayed and these lines are, are, are positions that, the, that a programmer can decide to use if he wants to pick a specific color to be displayed. Now this, this is only for the Vectrex, this specific feature here, but <clears throat> as long as you adjust your, your uh, as, long as, as long as you calibrate this so each of these colors is on that specific line, then a programmer will be able to pick what colors that he wants on the fly. So let me show you let me show you some games that are uh, on the Vectrex that are I'm, I'm going to show you some games that have been colorized by a programmer and I'm going to show you some games that have not been colorized 
that uh, were originally programmed for black and white but end up looking pretty cool already. This is Berserk for the Vectrex, but it's been modified by Malbin for color output. He also matched the colors to the original game. And this game still has speech support. But as you can see, we have the blue walls, the yellow guys. There's auto, I can go over the next level. And check it out, man. All the colors are accurate uh, to the arcade machine. And like I said before, I am no programmer, but I believe this is, this is not that complicated of a task for a programmer to do. It's literally changing the intensities of individual vectors to pick the colors that they wanted. Now this is Thrust for the Vectrex. This might not be the best colorized game, but it's one of my favorites for sure. Definitely one of my favorites. But this was never intended to be colorized. It was always intended to be black and white. But, it turns out to be a pretty good game with that color system that I mentioned. All on its own. So let's find another game. Here we have Protector. This is a, uh, a Defender clone. There's a lot of green and yellow in this one. Well, when you blow up, check out all those colors. Ah, I, j I just like it. <laughs> okay, let's see what else we can find. Here we have Yasi. Now keep in mind, this was only intended to be for black and white. So if someone were to decide to change the colors on this game, you could, he could pick whatever colors he wants everything to be. But as you can see, we have uh, white invaders on top, cyan invaders in the middle, green invaders in the bottom, and so on. <clears throat> now this game only has two colors, but if I wanted to, I can change colors around. Uh, for example, hold on. Let's go over here. Here. Let's turn this off and let's turn this on. I could make all kinds of... You can pick anything you want to change to whatever color you want, if that makes sense. Now, like I said, this is normally a black and white image. And I can change the settings on here, do all kinds of different things. Just all kinds of different color palettes I can choose from. Or I can have uh, pulse width modulation between different colors, and things like that. Or I can just leave it original. If I want to, I can disable specific colors and fill them in with uh, whatever color I want and so on.
as a test. Uh, in fact, this is the very first time that I've ever tested this board with Red Baron. But as a test, I've connected the color monitor through the board to my Red Baron. And we are in color. <laughs> and that's all yellow. I don't know if you could tell that in the camera. It's so damn fuzzy. How do I get that to come clear? <laughs> but this works with any, um, black and white vector game. In fact, uh, it looks really good with Asteroids. It's almost as if it was intended for Asteroids. Okay, so here we have uh, the color board and a color monitor connected to Omega Race. And down here, let me let, let down the tripod here. Down here, we have it connected to the color monitor. And I put a piece of smoked plexi right there so we can kind of uh, see it in the camera a little better. I'm going to go ahead and start a game. Well, let me see if I get this a little closer. Damn it! I hate how this is all so out of focus. Maybe if I get a little closer. Jeez. But you get the idea. It's so hard to take a picture of something. What I need is I need one of those cameras with a focus adjustment, a fixed focus adjustment, instead of strictly automatic focus. But you get the idea. Well, unfortunately, I guess you can call this revision one. I planned on this to be the final revision, and I was so confident in myself that I ordered several, several, several blanks. But um, there's one more feature I want to add to this. I want to add switches that allow this to uh, mirror the image and rotate the image on screen. And that would be helpful for games that um, are, are displayed sideways in, in cabinets like Tempest and also would be helpful in games that have mirrors inside like uh, Asteroids Deluxe. And I would rather do I would rather have a switch built in rather than ask you to rotate or swap your yoke windings or yoke wires. But let me explain a little bit about how how this board operates. We have two potentiometers here and here, and they uh, are they're used during calibration. We have two potentiometers here and here. These are for X and Y size adjustments. We have one potentiometer here, which controls Z blanking. And these three uh, dip switches here control red, green, and blue. They turn off and on programmable mode for Vectrex, or you leave them on to run programmable mode for arcade machines. Now, if anyone, were, anyone wanted to, you could flip one channel off or on and uh, use, a, use a remote control that actually controls, yes, the remote control comes with this, that actually controls um, each channel. And with those channels, you can control pulse width modulations. You can, um, if you wanted to, you can even make it uh, multi-color mode and all kinds of things like that. Um, and these dip switches here control um, uh, the, 
that whether you want vector correction circuit uh, enabled or not. Ve now, vector correction circuit is used for the Vectrex only. So if you're going to use this with an arcade machine, you want to leave these switches off. But uh, that's it. Oh, and these LEDs. These LEDs are used for calibration purposes only, only with uh, arcade machines. Now, uh, boy, I wish I, had some, wish I had something to write with. Okay, I'm going to explain a little bit about how to calibrate this with an arcade machine. If you if you have let's say asteroids and you put it into test mode, you'll have those like right in the middle of the screen. You'll see that crosshatch. Right in the middle of the screen, you'll see a line, a line, a line, a line, a line, and that'll show the bright the brightest intensity all the way down to the weakest intensity. Now, when you adjust these pots, you can tune them in to pick which colors you want and where you want them to be based on those lines in test mode. Now, if you are running this in an arcade machine, um, these LEDs will light up from the dimmest to the brightest intensity. And, and, and based on how these, when these LEDs turn on is, 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 a, is a factor that helps you out when you are calibrating it. So you know you're not going beyond the spectrum or if you're not wasting a bunch of, uh, of colors, if that makes sense. But uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, those of you who have made the pre-order, um, I'm sorry. I really expected I really expected the final version to be this right here, but it's uh, it's not. It, 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 and if it bothers you, I can go ahead and send this out. I can send this version out to you, you guys if you want that have already made the pre-order. Um, but if you want to wait for a couple more added features, um, revision two will be made regardless. And and uh, you know I can send it out then if you want also. And if any of you guys are watching this are interested in in, a, in buying one of these, you can either wait till it comes out, or you can uh, you can contact me th through my email, k o p p j a s o n eight three at yahoo.com, and you can go ahead and uh, buy it now or buy it when it's done. It doesn't really matter. Either way, the project will not will not stop. And they'll be available for forever, <laughs> you know, for a long time. So, so you don't have to be, you're not in a hurry to get it. Anyways, I guess that's about it. I'm getting tired. It's about four in the morning. And uh, I kind of missed you guys. I haven't made a video for a while. I know I've been getting people uh, leaving comments wondering if I'm dead or not. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. I'm just, uh, I just got caught up in a bunch of projects all at once and haven't had time to make a video. Anyways, have a good one, guys.